Looking to pick up the Illin pipes or are interested in learning more about them? This video is for you. Thanks for checking out this video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm very glad to see you back. I wanted to make a video on uh, learning the Illin pipes. I've had some questions about how they compare to the Highland bagpipes and if I found that having some Highland bagpipe background has helped my playing at all. Uh, so this video is going to have a bit of discussion of that, but if you're new to the Illin pipes or looking to learn more about them, there's also a lot of details in this video that you might be able to gather from it. Um, so it's going to be broken down into a few different chapters, so feel free to look in the comments for all of those chapters if there's something specific you would like to see. So I'm going to tell you now about my experience in the Great Highland Bagpipes so you can have a little bit better understanding of where I'm coming from. Um, I started playing the Highland Bagpipes about 20 years ago in my local Army Cadet band. Um, through them, I was able to have some pretty good instruction from some talented pipers. I also attended two summer band camps where we spent a few weeks uh, getting some direction and instruction in the Great Highland Bagpipes. Um, as you'll see in my video I'll post here, my six month progress video, that's where I learned about the Illin Pipes and really kindled my passion for it. Um, after I left the cadets, I started in a civilian band in my community here. I did a couple years of playing with them where I uh, was taught many tunes and also started to instruct some other pipers. Um, I never got to what I would consider an expert level of playing, but I did get fairly proficient in the Great Highland Bagpipes. Uh, once I started getting into my career and going to college, um, I really let my bagpipe playing slide. I would only pick them up maybe once or twice a month and play a couple times a year at most. Um, so in the last 10 years, uh, my technique and everything just really slid away from me. Um, fast forward to now, you know, in the 2021 pandemic era, and I decided to pick up a hobby again. Um, really being interested in the Illin pipes, I decided to uh, try and pick that up. Uh, so I was able to purchase a set and um, get my playing started again. So the next thing I'm going to talk about a little bit are the Illin pipes and basically what you'll need to get started and some things you should know. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth about all the parts of the Illin pipes, um, but I do want to talk about some different variations that the Illin pipes come in. Uh, you'll hear people talk about half sets, uh, practice sets, and full sets. So with the Illin pipes, uh, we don't have the usual practice chanter that you're used to seeing with the Great Highland bagpipes. Our practice set is basically a bag, a bellow, and the chanter. Um, with that, that's really your, your cheapest option to get started and to start learning. Um, if you want to move up a step, you can purchase what's called a half set. So the half set is the practice set, plus it has the drones. So you'll have a baritone, a tenor, and a bass drone. Um, so that will allow you to have some accompaniment, and it's a little bit more challenging to play. Um, in my videos, I have the half set, so that's what you'll see uh, currently in my videos. Lastly, you have what's called a full set. So this is all of what the half set has, but there's an additional um, set of parts called the regulators. Um, again, I won't go into detail on this, but basically the regulators are keyed tubes that have reeds in them that you can play chords on or you can play accompaniment or harmonies. Uh, this is what really sets the Illin pipes apart from other bagpipes. So be sure to do some research on that and uh, you'll learn a lot about them on some videos that are here on YouTube. If you're looking to purchase a set of Illin pipes, I just wanted to touch on a few brief things I think you should know. Um, again, if you're new to the Illin piping world, I would highly suggest joining some community groups either on Facebook or some forums. Uh, there's a lot of people with great knowledge there. 
Uh, if you're looking to buy a set of Illen pipes, I would definitely suggest trying to find a local pipe maker in your area. Um, that might not always be possible for you, so definitely reach out to some pipe makers in um, different countries even to see if they can ship to you. I would very much suggest you stay away from the Amazon specials and um, eBay specials of um, Elon pipes there. They're usually in around $1,000 or under $1,000, um, often made in Pakistan. They are not quality instruments and you will have nothing but trouble. Uh, it's a hard enough instrument to learn without all of the complications that you'll get by purchasing one of those sets. Definitely purchase from a um, professional pipe maker or something along those lines. When you purchase, just be prepared that pipe makers are very busy and it's a very complicated instrument to make. Uh, there's often a wait time of months to years to purchase your set. Um, that's something you'll have to talk with your pipe maker about and see what their lead times and wait times are. While you're waiting for your pipes, I can always suggest that you purchase a whistle and start learning some tunes. Uh, getting some tunes in your head is really going to help you put them down on the pipes once you get your set. So lastly, I'm just going to talk about some key differences between the Great Highland bagpipes and the Illen pipes. So as I've mentioned already, the Illen pipes are a bellow blown pipes, where the Great Highland bagpipes are um, mouth blown pipes. Um, the Illen pipes are quite unique in that they have those regulators that I spoke of earlier and the chanter also has quite a bit more range than the Great Highland bagpipes. So I'm going to just flash up on the screen the scales of both instruments and you can see that the Illen pipes has um, again a quite a larger range. Um, what I haven't included in this is the potential to do chromatic scales. Um, you can purchase Illen chanters with keys to have sharps and naturals. Um, so there's a lot more you can do musically with these. Um, also, one nice thing about the Ellen pipes is you can cut out the sound because we block the chanter on our leg, um, which you can open and close to uh, start and stop the sound. I'm also just going to flash up on the screen a picture of a practice chanter next to an Ellen chanter. Uh, you can see the finger spacing and the holes are a little bit different, so just be prepared for that if you're coming over from the Highland Pipes. It's, it's going to feel a little bit weird at first. If you already have a set of Illen Pipes, be sure to put a comment below. I'd love to hear what you're playing on and how you like them. Now I'm going to talk about some of the challenges I faced coming from the Great Highland Bagpipes. Again, if you're new to the pipes, some of these might not apply to you. You're going to be learning something from scratch, so you're just going to have to work your way up to getting comfortable with the instrument. Coming from the Great Highland bagpipes, you're going to have a little bit of a leg up because you have some of the finger speed, you're used to how the bagpipes work and uh, keeping a bag full of air and just keeping a continuous sound. However, when you pick up the Illen pipes for the first time, you're going to have to learn to use the bellow to inflate your bag instead of blowing by mouth. Uh, this makes things a little bit awkward. It's, it's a little bit uh, different at first, but you'll get used to it fairly quickly and be able to keep up a steady sound. Uh, when I started, I could remember like just subconsciously wanting to blow as I was running out of air and forgetting that I had to inflate with the bellows. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time to get used to. Um, I was able to keep the Yellen pipes running after a day or two, um, but it's really taken me a few months to, to get it very subconscious and just be able to continuously play. Um, I've still got to work on it, um, but it's it's come a long way and it'll take time. Uh, on the Illen pipes, another challenge you're going to face is um, the octaves. So coming from the Great Highland bag pipes, um, we were always schooled in just keeping one steady pressure. Blow as steady as you can. Um, so the chanter was tuned to one pressure, your drones were tuned to one pressure. On the Illen pipes, that doesn't apply because we actually variate the bag pressure to achieve the different notes and octaves. Uh, so basically, your lower octave of notes um, is played with one pressure, and then as you get up to the higher notes, you have to increase the bag pressure um, to keep the notes in tune and to jump into the second octave. Um, I'll post a video of the scales here if you want to check it out, um, just so you can see kind of what to expect with that. Um, now, even note to note, sometimes you have to vary the pressure in the bag a little bit. You're going to get used to your chanter and your reed and just understand what it needs. 
Um, the very nice thing is the Ilan pipe drone reeds are a bit more stable than the Highland bagpipes, so even in variating the pressure, you're not changing the pitch like the Highland bagpipes used to do. If you are coming from the Highland bagpipes, I would highly suggest finding a teacher or a mentor that could instruct you in the Ilan pipes. Um, I thought I'd be able to pick it up fairly easily, but there's just so much more technique and um, things that I didn't realize I would encounter playing the Ilan pipes. Um, a lot of the grace notes and uh, thrills and doublings that you learnt on the Great Highland bagpipes don't really cross over to the Ilan pipes superbly well. Um, the technique and the playing is a little bit different. Um, but if you have the finger speed from those things, it, it will help you out when you start to learn triplets and crans and uh, ornamentations like that on the Ilan pipes. Um, I just, I can't stress enough that there's so much to this instrument that it's very, very valuable having someone with experience to help guide your, your journey. I would also suggest uh, finding a local group or some forums that you can post some questions on and uh, post some videos. It's very encouraging to just have that community about you. Um, being where I am uh, located, I don't think there's any other Ilan Pipers within probably six or seven hours of me. Uh, living in a northern Ontario community in Canada, it's just not a known instrument here. Um, so finding those communities and just being able to see other Pipers play is um, just worth it. So another challenge you might face uh, with the Ilan pipes is uh, getting comfortable with the instrument. Uh, as you can see in some of my videos, there's just a lot going on. You have your bellows, you have the bag, you have drones laying across your leg, you have a chanter you're holding on to. Um, it, it feels very awkward at first, but you get used to it. Uh, one thing I would comment on that challenged me is in my beginning stages of playing, I started to have some shoulder pain playing the bellows. Um, I guess my, my left arm with the bag was strong and used to it from the Highland pipes, but pumping the bellows constantly started to cause a bit of pain. Uh, my suggestion for that is don't play through the pain. Uh, if something hurts, whether it be in your wrist or your shoulder, just stop, take a break, and um, start back up in a little bit. Never play through the pain, you can do damage. So another thing I will comment on is the tuning of the Highland pipes. Uh, Highland pipes were fairly easy to tune in regards to your chanter played, you tune the drones to your chanter, that was usually good enough and you were set to go. On the Ilan pipes, because they're not a mouth-blown instrument, it's relying on your environment for humidity and temperature. Um, so you'll notice your tuning changes when the room warms up or cools down or the reed changes a little bit when the humidity changes. Um, so be prepared for that. They're a little bit more uh, finicky to those things. Uh, another thing I will comment on but not go into depth on this video is because there are two octaves on the Ilan pipes, um, you have a whole nother door that opens up to tuning, uh, tuning finicky, I guess I could say. Um, you'll change something in the lower octave and the upper octave drifts as well and now that's out of tune or vice versa. So there's a fine balance you have to find in tuning your, your chanter. Um, there's a lot of videos and demonstrations of that online. Um, so just be prepared for that. When you're in your learning phases, it's not going to be as important to have everything perfectly in tune. Um, but as you start picking up an ear for it, you're going to want to fine tune things a little bit. For the last part of this video, I'm going to provide two tunes as demonstrations if you have your Ilan pipes and you want to start playing. Um, the first tune I'm going to play is Amazing Grace. Um, if you've come from the Highland Bagpipes, you probably already know this tune, so it's going to be a very good one to start, and it's a nice slow tune so you can get your bellows and your steady rhythm going. Uh, the second tune is going to be called Jim Ward's Jig. It's um, just a basic, fun jig that uh, is good to have in your repertoire. I've slowed it right down so you can um, just try and follow along with it. A little tip you can try as well is in the settings in the YouTube video, you can slow down the playback speed. So if I've played it too quickly for you and you need it a bit slower to learn, feel free to just set the playback speed to something slower and follow along that way. So lastly, I just want to make a comment before I start into the tunes that um, I highly suggest you find a teacher for this. Um, I've put these tunes up just as something you can follow along with and start your learning process. Um, but again, I'm only seven months into my journey, so I am not an experienced player and I don't want to uh, forward any bad habits 
that I might have in uh, into your learning. Uh, so use these as a guide only and something to have fun with, but definitely um, make the effort to find a teacher and have someone that can instruct you and teach you proper technique on the Illin pipes. Um, so yeah, enjoy these videos and uh, thanks for tuning in. Looking to Blah. come here, jump up. Oh, I got gotcha. you.